What's up everyone, Adam Saxon here with Guy in a Cube and I've got another roundup for you. Before we get into the roundup, Pass Summit is coming up. It is in two weeks. I'm very excited. This is gonna be my 10th Pass Summit in a row. If you haven't been to Pass Summit or if you're not, or if maybe this is your first time, you can check out a video I did last year for just highlights of what happened there. You can check that out up here. And I would love to see you. I will mostly be in the SQL clinic, so you can come by and say hi. Patrick LeBlanc's gonna be there as well. We will be hanging out, answering your questions. So come stop, say hi, and we'll talk about a few things. With that, let's dig into the roundup. First up is a blog post from Chris Webb where he looks at the REST API that is now available with SQL Server 2017 reporting services. So if you're using SQL 2017 reporting services, you can actually use the REST API to communicate with the report server instead of just the web services. And so he looks at how you can actually do this. He uses Power BI Desktop to actually explore the report server a little bit. He also calls out that you can actually make calls to the model inside of report server. This is for data sets specifically that are created inside of the report server. So just a reminder that reporting services itself does not support Power BI reports. If you wanna use Power BI reports, you have to use Power BI report server. So if you're interested in just using REST APIs against reporting services itself, check out this blog post. Imke Feldman has a blog post where she looks at how to bulk extract your M queries from multiple Power BI desktop files. This may be interesting if you're trying to analyze the queries that you're using inside of Power BI desktop files, or maybe trying to compare across multiple files themselves. I thought this was just an interesting technique and something you can maybe explore and see how this could benefit you in your organization and what you're trying to accomplish. She also has a link down in the bottom of the blog to an idea for a feature improvement, which would make this easier to do from the product itself outside of going through all the steps that she calls out in the blog. If this interests you, check out her blog. Links down in the description below. Ruth Pozuelo's got a video on YouTube which talks about how to get Power BI Desktop installed in a way that will automatically update for you. This highlights the fact that Power BI Desktop is now in the Windows Store and that's really the key to this. A couple things to note, it is 64-bit only. So if you do need the 32-bit, you're gonna have to go download that manually the old way. And she calls out a few other things inside of this video to be aware of. There were also some other items called out in the comments on the YouTube video itself. So be sure to go check that out. Links down in the description below along with all the other items that I'm talking about in this roundup and some bonus items for you. Christian Berg from the Power BI Cat Team's got a blog where he looks at how to visualize and interact with your Azure machine learning experiments. If you're using Azure machine learning and you're creating experiments and you wanna just explore those items with Power BI, this is a great blog. He goes through how he set this up and talks about the different pages in the report that he's got. It is a long blog post, very detailed. So if you're interested in exploring your Azure machine learning experiments with Power BI, check out this blog post. We had a contest going on for the Timeline Storyteller. This was using the Timeline Visual for Power BI, and we made an announcement of a winner. So Devin Knight from Pragmatic Works won the grand prize for this contest. Congrats, Devin. And you can check out this blog post to see the runner-ups and the results of the contest itself. So be sure to check that out and send them a congrats over on Twitter. All right, what was your favorite item in this week's roundup? Go and leave that down in the comments below and let me know. For me, it was the REST API for reporting services. I will freely admit I have a bias for developer related items. So I went that way, but let me know your thoughts down below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more great videos from both Patrick and myself. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.